Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing With Den. Well, finally got the new ultralight, all singing, all dancing seat box made. Now, for anybody that uh, watches the channel regularly, you'd have known that uh, back in November, I said I was going to make myself a brand new version of my normal match fishing seat box here, but that it needed to be lighter because I needed to be able to put it on my back and to walk maybe up to half a mile with it. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was to uh, make it have its own set of wheels because the wheels for this one go with the platform that this sits on when I'm sitting in the water. So anyway, long story short, I wanted a lighter, smaller, more portable box. And did I achieve it? Well, yes and no. Um, when I did the last video, I kind of thought I might be able to get this below nine kilos, and I didn't. It's nine and a half kilos, which is actually pretty damn good, isn't it? Really pleased with myself. Um, and the way I've achieved that is using slightly lighter materials in some places and also making everything sort of less deep and less wide and all the rest of it. But I'll show you that in just a second. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that it looks pretty much identical to this one. Height-wise, it's pretty much the same. And that's kind of a given because that's how tall my legs are and that's obviously how high it's going to be. But in all other respects, it's less wide and less deep. Um, if I take this apart, I've actually made it pretty much identical to the way I made my existing seat box. Just take that little clip off there and oops, undo that dent. You'd think you'd know that by now after using it for two years. That goes down and then just slots in like that. I'll do those up again in a minute for you. But basically, you can see it's pretty much identical. Now, where I did save weight was on the internal legs. Um, obviously, I'm not going to take all of these out and show you, but that's the part I'm talking about there. The original box here had three millimeter walls on them, and that did make it quite heavy. So I've actually gone back to days of yore when I used to use 1.6 millimeter wall thickness. That always worked fine. I just decided that, uh, you know, this being a more robust box, I might need them. Frankly, I don't think I do. So I've gone back to 1.6 millimeter wall thickness, as I say there. You'll also notice that I've stayed with the lift down foot plate. And the reason for that is because I've made this somewhat narrower front to rear. Um, if I'd have used a pull out one, I wouldn't have got all this extra room I've got now on my uh, foot plate. And so I've stayed with the lift up and drop down one because it works for me and it works great. Um, the other thing that I've done, um, you'll notice that this one is just a straightforward lift up lid. Whereas this one, as you probably already know, has four trays in the back. Now the trays probably weigh about 12 ounces, three quarters of a pound each, and four of them adds weight. So I've done away with all of those. And what I've done here is I've made the, the framework exactly the same. And in fact, if you watched my previous video on how I made this, then you can make this one too, because it's exactly the same. I've just made it a bit smaller. But the top box is, of course, just the box. And for this one, what I've done is instead of having those big heavy duty trays, I've got lift out tray here with my sort of ready kit, if you like. So if I'm setting up at the very start, I've got all the shot and line and hooks and whatever sitting in there. And this tray weighs almost nothing. I've actually got over here, this is the, the base of the tray, and it's one millimeter thick plywood. Also, the sides are made out of this, which is, I think it's five millimeter balsa wood. That doesn't have to be strong, it just has to be strong enough to hold this together. But all these cross supports make it perfectly strong. Strong enough, rather. So that's it, that's the sort of the ready box, if you like, which would have been one of my pull-out trays in the past. Underneath that, I've got an area for floats, and I've just chucked a, a sort of a random selection of floats in there for wagglers, um, avens, that sort of thing, just in case I want to go either um, fresh still water fishing or river fishing. Also in the front of this one we've got some room for winders. I've just thrown these in just for demonstration purposes. But again underneath 
it's an area for different items of tackle, like in this case, one of my bait droppers, pole pots and so on. And finally, at the very back, because this is now about 75 to 80 meter, uh, millimeters deep, I can now get my big feeders in there. So there's a selection of big feeders. Now I did talk about the possibility of having another sort of a, a pull-out um, tackle box, if you like, like you get on the commercial seat boxes, um, and, and fitting under there. But frankly, I've got so much kit into that there, and bear in mind this is an alternate box, not the all singing, all dancing matchbox, that actually, for me, is pretty good. So, all in all then, I'm pretty pleased with how this has turned out. Um, as I say, weight-wise, this comes in at 9.5 kilograms, and that's probably less than half of what some of the commercially available boxes actually weigh. Um, this one weighed in at 13 kilograms when it was empty, um, nine with that one, still a good saving, seven or eight pounds saving. But also, if you remember I mentioned that these middle legs here, with this box, I never use the middle legs anymore. I just extend the front, extend the back to whatever it is I need. Remember, I don't get to sit on flat platforms mostly. I'm usually on a bank, so these will be dropped down. Those will probably be a little bit uh, sort of different, but the central ones I haven't been using at all. And as one of my subscribers or viewers actually pointed out once, that'll break then. Well, I've been now using it for oh, eight, nine months and it hasn't broke yet. If it does, you'll be proved right, whoever you were, and I'll be proved wrong. But if I'm proved correct, and I'm pretty sure I am, if I've been using this for eight months now, I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Um, I can probably do away with those middle legs and that will actually get me to, guess what? Just below nine kilograms. So that's the, the basic box then. Um, the other thing I did was to obviously make everything compatible. I'll just grab all of these for a second. So that everything that I need can fit from this box to this box. So if you give me a second, I'll just set all that up rather than you having to watch me doing it. And then we'll come straight back to you. And that's everything set up. Um, as you can see, I've got the two side trays on it. I've actually made these um, separately from the other one here because I made those out of this structural material, this 38mm uh, by 25 by 2mm structural material, and it made them quite heavy. This time, what I've done is I've just used some 25 by 25 by 1.6mm box section and slightly changed the way I've made them, but guess what? they're also a pound lighter. So I'm saving weight all around. Now, as far as everything else goes, as you can see, everything is set up as per my normal sort of setup, but these are the different uh, attachments and accessories I use for that box there. First one, of course, is this is my um, landing net arm, which I just drop it down onto there. That just slots into here. Uh, this is my feeder rest, uh, back rest and front rest. All of these, by the way, are made by me. Nothing's getting bought these days. All made on the 3D printer um, to my sort of own sort of specifications. It's not difficult, but it doesn't have saved some money. Uh, same for this one. This one, obviously, I can lift up, drop down, do whatever. And I've got one of those uh, rod rest heads that also articulates as well. So I can get whatever I need from that and it's going to be in a perfect position for me. Um, you'll notice these uh, other sort of different plastic things on the legs. The two smaller ones on the outside are where the keep net arms go. Um, and the top one there is for my uh, camera, which looks out and, and watches out for the float or the end of the, um, the tip of the, the feeder rod or whatever. So really, as I say, I can just literally interchange pretty much everything. Oh, one other thing. Um, you've got my pole roost here. That just slots in to the ends of this tray too. Um, and that's it for the, the actual box itself. But if I take this apart, let's undo those a bit. What you'll notice is that I can use this as storage. I take these apart. I, I don't know about you, but I always have a problem with storing bits and bobs. So. This, for me, has become invaluable. 
I'll take all of this off. Bear with me for a second. Okay, and then just need to get that last one off here. This is obviously just screwed down. Excuse my back. Comes apart so it fits. And then that can fit in here. Oops. <laughs> I need to make this one a little bit shorter, but trust me, generally <laughs> it will fit into there. I could I could cut this out, but there's it's worth having as an outtake. I'm literally I've got probably four millimeters too long. It won't take much to just shorten that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? But anyway, what I was trying to show you was that this comes off here, and then this becomes a storage item. All we do is fit that into there. Make sure these are undone. That one into that side. Do up the little knobs. And again, the knobs are done on the 3D printer. Just turn it around to show you. And now we've got storage. So again, I was going to put that under here, but to be honest, this just fits neatly into the side pocket of one of my um, carry-alls. And so that works for me. Right. Now, the only other thing I haven't shown you yet is the trolley kit. And I'll do that now. So basically, this is very simple. To fit the wheels, all you have to do is drop the front plate legs, let's call it sort of eight inches or so. Try and get them about level. Just lock them off, release the foot plate itself. Now it's just a question of fitting the M6 bolts through the holes. And there we go, that's the first one. Just get that held on. And the back one. Okay, that's the arm on. So now I can drop the front plate and fit it exactly as per normal, lock it off, and now what I do is I go to the back and I just drop the back legs away. Again, there's no hard and fast rule, just somewhere about there. And now we're more or less ready to get the wheels on. Sorry if I'm out of breath, but as I've said before, I'm old. Now we're going to use the place where the little legs go to do this. And I've found the easiest way to do this is to lean this against your car like that. And then into there, into there. That's it. Don't bang your head then. Okay. So, that then is pretty much it. All I've got to do is for transportation purposes, lift the back legs up a bit. They don't have to go all the way, but really, that's the wheels on. It's slightly back heavy, so it's actually worth just keeping those down a little bit there. But the beauty of this is that you can put your carry-all on the front, strap it down with a couple of bungees, don't forget to take your legs with you, and that's the new ultralight seat box. And that's also the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, feel free. And if you want to donate, that's always appreciated too. See you next time.